Curb's a miracle, I, you know. Where Larry on Seinfeld would shoot another take if you said but and he had written and, here's a show where he hasn't written a word. Um, but he's labored over the stories. Uh, so a Curb script is as long as the number of scenes that are going to be in it. And each page is a description of what must occur in that scene. And sometimes there's a bullet point that you can use as a, an actual piece of dialogue. But more often than that, that's just an idea. And then you get into this space, and there's no rehearsal. And you start ad-libbing the scene. Um, now, when it's one-on-one -on -one with, you know, Larry and Jeff, Jeff and Cheryl, Jason and Larry, okay, manageable, definitely manageable, and fun and funny. But now Larry's proposing that we do what we would never have done anywhere else, which is the Seinfeld reunion. Everybody wants the Seinfeld reunion show. Larry says, let's do it on Curb. Let's, let's do a storyline on Curb where we're going to do the Seinfeld reunion show. And there's a lot of mixed emotions and some sense of foreboding. Mixed emotions on everyone's part, a sense of foreboding on my part. Mixed emotions are, you know, we got through our show and we kept all the emotions correct and the relationships are fine. But we haven't dealt with each other much since then. Now you want to throw us back together. Are, are things from the past going to emerge or are, they, or are we going to be okay? That's the first thing. But that's secondary. Primary. You're going to put six of us in front of the camera at the same time, no script. It's one thing when we have a script. Now there's no script. Who knows who, who's supposed to speak? When? How, who knows what to do? How are we going to do this? Physically, how are we going to do this? Number two. We haven't worked in us as an ensemble in 10 years. Just because we had it 10 years ago does not mean we still have it now. So we don't even know if the four of us can work together. Number three, these characters were marginally cute in their 30s and 40s. Now they're in their 40s and 50s. And you want us to go back into these roles and not much has changed. This could be just depressing. This could be the best way to prove that it was a fluke the first time. You don't even have a script. We can't even all look at a script and go, well, that's good. But it's Larry. We trust Larry. And there was a desire to, to get back together. And so much had happened. Michael had gone through his hard times. We had all rallied around Michael for that. Over the course of years, between the end of Seinfeld and The Curb, I had asked Jerry for a number of favors. He came through for me every time, every time. Um, and I knew that Jerry probably didn't understand, I hope he does now, that despite our disagreements about things, my affection for him is consummate. I, if, there, if there's a love and a dislike bar, it's not even 90-10. It's, it's 99 and maybe 1. And the 1 is a disagreement. It's not, a, it's not an I don't like you. It's we don't see eye to eye on this. Um, and I thought, well, it would be nice to do that and, and sort of cement that relationship again. But I really, I, I talked to Julia about it before we did it, and we also said, to be quite honest about it, we also went, you know, we're throwing away millions of dollars here. Because anywhere other than HBO, they'd have to pay us, they'd have to back the money truck up for us to come together and do another episode of Seinfeld. And, you know, we're making okay money on Curb, but it's not what it would be anywhere else. And it will, and it will forever... If there's any speculation that we might do this, this is it. It won't happen after this. So for a number of reasons, we're going, is this a good idea or not? 
it's Larry. So we, we all say yes. The first thing we shot for that reunion was the table read of the reunion episode. So we went back to stage nine on the Radford lot where we had spent all those years. And there's Monk's diner. And there's the apartment. And there's the tables, just the way we used to do. Now, no audience member would know this. There's people that you need to see there around that table. But the people that would have been around that table in 1998, 1997, were around that table again. Our crew, our Castle Rock reps, our NBC reps, the people that we knew would be at that table were at that table. And we are back. We're, we're, it's like we stepped through a wormhole and we are 10 years back in time and it was the most surreal and that's all we could do is just look at each other and go this is unbelievable this is unbelievable it's like we never left and the attitudes among us like I say are, are the, the, the grist in our oyster never came onto the set and now we're back on the set. And all the attitudes and all the interplay and all the characteristics of our relationship when the four of us or five of us got together to play and make funny, had it, it, it was like it was five minutes ago. And it was, for me, um, an incredibly healing, lovely, wonderful experience. Um, and then, and then st stupid, crazy things happened. Like um, the day that w where I really went, okay, we're in Wonderland now. So the storyline is that Jason, TV Jason, quits the Seinfeld reunion, and Larry says, "I can play George. I am George. I'll play George," and they give him a shot, and then we shoot a. Reunion Seinfeld scene with Larry as George. The day they're shooting that, I'm not on the set. They don't need me. I get a call at 9 o'clock in the morning from Larry David, frantic, going, you have to come down. I don't know how to do you. I said, what are you, ta what are you talking about? I was doing you, you idiot. You know that. Just do what you do. Oh, George is different from me. I said, he's not different from you, Larry. I was doing you. You have to come down and give me line readings. I went, you've got to be kidding me. And I went down, <laughs> and I'm giving Larry David line readings as George, who is Larry David. I mean, really, we were, in, we were in Wonderland that day, and it was fantastic. And I'm just looking at him going, you're an idiot. <laughs> you are an idiot. I don't know what I'm doing here. You are, and, and then he would argue with me about the line reading. And I go, you told me you want to know how I would do it. And then he's arguing with me about it. That's not the way to do it. In Larry's head, Jason Alec, the curb Jason, is a mirror reflection of Larry. He uses Jason as the one person who Larry can't win an argument with. So he uses Jason as George almost, as if... It's matter and antimatter Larry's meeting each other, and they cancel each other out. That's how he uses me. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, I would hope it's not me. I don't think I would borrow a pen and shove it up my own butt and then hand it back to a guy. I think I'm a little beyond that.